Hello, today I'm going to be going over Trihackme's Fishing Emails 2 room. Uh, this room is going to be a little bit different from my other videos where this is going to be more of an explanation of the content inside and more of a general walkthrough. Um, in my other videos I prefer to do demonstrations, but this room doesn't appear to have any VMs in it, so there's no reason to do a demonstration. So let's go ahead and hop into it with Task 1 Introduction. The introduction just talks about how we've already covered the basics concerning emails in the previous room and I'll put a link to that video in the description below and it wants us to dive into looking at actual phishing emails and it tells us that each email sample showcase in this room will demonstrate different tactics used to make phishing emails look legitimate and that the more convincing a phishing email appears the higher the likelihood that somebody will do what the malicious user wants them to do, such as clicking on a malicious link or executing a malicious file, et cetera, et cetera. And it also gives us just a quick warning that the samples throughout the room contain information from actual spam and or phishing emails and they want us to proceed with caution, which we will. On to task two. Task two is cancel your PayPal order. So this email sample will highlight spoofed email addresses, URL shortening services, and HTML to impersonate a legitimate brand. And I actually like the way that they have this room set up. They have it split up into the different sections of the emails, such as like the very top, the body, and uh, the bottom. And they also have hyperlinks and stuff like that. But let's go ahead and hop into it. So some quick observations. Um, it looks like it's coming from service at paypal.com, but the actual email address is this long gibbly gop gooberish gibberish. You know, that means absolutely nothing. Um, and the same with the to address, and it looks like the subject line is saying that they have a receipt for payment as well. And that's just kind of what these say. It says that the sender's details, service at paypal.com, doesn't match the sender's email address, which is this. The subject line hints that you made a purchase or a transaction of some sort, and if you don't recall this account, then it will grab your attention. And this is made to make you interact with it with haste. Now let's look at the contents of the email body. So looking at this body, it looks to be a receipt for $120 for some gift cards. That's pretty standard for phishing emails and stuff like that. You'd kind of glance over this and think, oh, snap, did I lose $120? What can I do about this? Oh, I can cancel the order. This is the only interactable object inside of the email. And it says that here there aren't any other attachments associated. The only interactive element is the cancel the order. And if you clicked cancel the order, it would take you to this link right down here. Um, which has actually been shortened using a URL shortener, which I believe will be discussed more in the Phishing Emails 3 room, which I will also be making a video on. But anyway, this is looking at the raw HTML source, and this is where, if you clicked on Cancel the Order, this is where it would take you. And by using an online tool that would let us know the destination of that shortened URL, it shows that it's like a Google page. So if this was actually from PayPal.com, why would it redirect us to Google? That's a little weird. But anyway, let's hop into the questions. What phrase does the gibberish sender email start with? So if we go back up to the sender email, we can see that it starts with no reply. All right, and that's it for task two. So let's hop into task three, track your package. So this email sample will highlight spoofed email addresses, pixel tracking, and link manipulation. So let's look at some uh, quick observations about this email sample. So one, it looks like, or it's tailored to look like it's coming from a distribution center of some sort, and the subject line as well as the link in the email body um, give a tracking number. And it gives us a note here, in this email sample, Yahoo has blocked the images from automatically loading, and he guesses as to why. And it's talking about this, where it says, for your security, we disabled all images and links in this email. And the reason why will be explained in just a minute. And they also talk about here, typically, well, you can hover your cursor over a link to see where the link is pointing to. But in this sample, the technique won't work because Yahoo disabled links in the email. And you'd have to look at the raw source code to find it out. And if you don't know what that looks like, I can just demonstrate it right here. Here, there's a link. And if we hover over it, 
we can see in the bottom left hand corner of the screen the link to where it would actually go to appears. But since Yahoo in this case is blocking images and links, we can't do that and we'd have to look at the raw source code. And if you do, you can see here and here that these are links to where it would go to. And I don't know about you, but this devret.xyz and a whole bunch of random letters and numbers looks a little suspicious, as well as this where it says tracking.png. And here's where it talks about the pixel tracking. It shows here that we can see an image file, tracking.png, and these trackers will send information back to the spammer server. And typically, spammers tend to embed tracking pixels, very, very small images, into their spam emails, and they have a really good link um, to read more about the concept. I'm not going to go into it because I like to keep my videos kind of short, and you guys can always go back and reference these track hacking rooms on your own. And then it says here that we understand why now they automatically block the images. And to reiterate, they're blocking the images so that this tracking data isn't automatically sent back when you open the email. And it talks about how, going back to the hyperlink, which is this, the link is pointing to a shitty looking domain, devret.xyz, that screams suspicious. And the only distribution center this domain can be associated with is malware, but further analysis is the only way to confirm that definitely. So you may have an initial suspicion, but you'd have to look it up later to see if your suspicions are confirmed. Anyway, going on to the questions, what is the root domain for each URL? Defang the URL. So the root domain is just going to be devret.xyz, but it wants us to defang it. So we're going to have to do devret bracket dot bracket xyz. And I just know that from experience because I've done these rooms and I know what defanging is. But if you go to the hint, CyberChef can help you with it. And I'll demonstrate that real quick as well. So you could go to CyberChef and go here and type defang, whoop, defang, and pull that over. And if we put that devret.xyz, you can see that in the output here, it defangs it for us. So that way, if somebody actually clicked on this, it's not going to actually take them anywhere. Anyway, moving on to task four, select your email provider to view the document. Um, this email highlights urgency, HTML to impersonate a legitimate brand, link manipulation, credential harvesting, and poor grammar and or typos. So it has a lot of indicators that it is illegitimate. Anyway, let's take a closer look. Um, quick observations, this is the date that it was sent, and it says that it expires July 15th. That highlights urgency, so it makes you want to click on it fast, and it wants you to click on this download document here, and that's the action that they want you to perform. Um, another indicator that they kind of reference here, poor grammar and or typos, is that if you look here, 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 and here, each one of those is a different font. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that something is suspicious, but to me personally, if I see something that has four different fonts right next to each other, I find that suspicious. Let's keep going. If you click on download document here, it'll take you to this page, app.popt.in, and then a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, it's redirected to look like it's OneDrive, which is where you might find a fax, um, a PDF of some sort. And you can see it says PDF in the background here. Um, then they want you to either click get document or preview facts. Either one will take you to this next site here and it's posing as SharePoint online, but it actually shows Adobe document cloud. Those are two separate companies. SharePoint is from Microsoft and Adobe is a completely separate company. So that's a red flag right there. They talk about how noticing the URL, it doesn't look like it's related to Adobe. It says BDK Motorsport. That has nothing to do with Adobe at all. Continuing on. The victim has options to sign in with the email provider of their choice. So for example, if you clicked on sign in with Outlook, it would take you to this pop-up where it would want you to put in your email address and password. And in this case, our victim chose to log in with Outlook because per the instructions, to read the document, please enter with the valid email credentials that this file was sent to. So they'll put in their credentials and no matter what they put in, it will say invalid credentials because it's not actually signing them into anything. What it's doing is it's harvesting their credentials. And it looks like they actually received this email sample from any run. And if we wanted to interact with it, we could go to this link below. Uh, but we are not going to do that in this case. We're going to keep moving on. 
Going on the questions, this email sample used the names of a few major companies, their products and logos, such as OneDrive and Adobe. What other company name was used in this phishing email? And if we go back up here, we can see, you know, Adobe, SharePoint, OneDrive. But the answer that they're looking for is Citrix, which is right here. All right, moving on to task five, please update your payment details. So this email sample highlights spoofed email addresses, urgency, HTML to impersonate a legitimate brand, poor grammar, and attachments. So going on to the quick observations, it looks like it's coming from net LLX billing. That's obviously supposed to look like Netflix. Um, so that's immediate spelling error. And the sender address is completely different from anything that Netflix was sent from. So that's just a huge red flag right there. Netflix ID suspended. That's a sense of urgency. And as well as this, it says that your account is on hold. This is to make you want to click the link or the attachments inside. It doesn't look like there's any links. It looks like there's an attachment that they want you to click. It talks about how there's different misspellings of the word Netflix, and they're not sure what the purpose of that was. They probably just misspelled it multiple times. Um, typically, you see this technique when it comes to typo squatting, but that wasn't the case here. Anyway, moving on. The victim needs to open the attachment PDF to update their Netflix account. That's right here. Another red flag is there's this phone number here for questions, and that doesn't look like a US-based phone number. A US-based phone number has 10 digits. This has 13. So that's yet another red flag. Moving on, if we actually opened up this PDF, it would open up this page, and it would want you to click on this link. And we'll actually look at this email attachment in closer detail in the next room. Moving on to the questions. What should users do if they receive a suspicious email or text message claiming to be from Netflix? So in order to get this answer, you actually have to go to the hint and go to this website. And if we scroll down, they're advised to forward the message to phishing at Netflix.com. And there we go. Well, moving on to task six, your recent purchase. So this one will highlight spoofed email addresses. Recipient is BCC'd, which is blind carbon copied, and we'll go over that in a second. It has urgency, poor grammar, and attachments. So quick observations. It's made to appear that it's from Apple support. Right here it says Apple support, but then it has yet another very odd sender email address. Um, it looks like it's BCC'd, so it says this email wasn't sent directly to the victim's inbox, but rather BCC'd, which is blind carbon copied, which essentially means that um, recipients who are BCC'd will receive the message, but they won't be able to see the addresses listed in the BCC field. So if there was more than one person listed here, uh, this person couldn't see that person and vice versa. And there's also a sense of urgency, action required, um, action is required on behalf of the victim. Um, there's also a few noticeable typos, such as pay a mint and do no reply. And this particular email doesn't necessarily have an email body. It's totally blank. The email simply contains an attachment, which is a D .dot file, and which is just a layout template file for Microsoft Word. Kind of not something that you'd expect from Apple support. And if you actually open it up, it'll open it in Word and it will give you this picture here as well as this long long link they also want us to notice that the link contains certain keywords related to apple such as like apps and ios and moving on to the questions what does bcc mean it means blind carbon copy and what technique was used to persuade the victim to not ignore the email and act swiftly and that's urgency because they're saying action required Moving on to task seven, DHL Express Courier Shipping Notice. This one is to highlight a spoofed email address, HTML to impersonate a legitimate brand and attachments. Just looking at it, it looks like the sender's email doesn't match the company that's being impersonated, such as, which is in, in this case, DHL. It's coming from Glam, or it's coming from Glam Car Company, which has nothing to do with DHL Express. Um, the subject line it gives the impression that there's a package and that there's a package number or some kind of tracking number and the HTML in the body was designed to look like it was sent from DHL. Looking at the actual source code for the email, the 
link to view the email as a web page, which is this right here, doesn't actually contain a destination URL. There's nothing nearby it. And that the only element the victim can interact with in this email is the email attachment, which is an Excel document. And if they click on that, it will open this, and it's in a completely different language than English, and it wants them to click enable editing. It doesn't show us in the, it doesn't show it in this picture, but there would be a bar that goes across the screen right about here that would say enable editing. Don't click this if you don't know who it's from. And um, it also seems like the attachment runs a payload that throws an error right here. And again, we'll look more in closer detail in the upcoming Phishing Emails 3 room. So what is the name of the executable that the Excel attachment attempts to run? It looks like it's regasms.exe. Moving on to task eight, the conclusion, it talks about how throughout this room we've looked at various email samples and how they share techniques. Um, and they also give us multiple resources to look further into phishing. I highly recommend the phishing quiz one right here, and I'm gonna link it below. It basically just quizzes whether um, you can spot a phishing email, and I found that pretty interesting, honestly. So let's go ahead and complete it up. If you like the video, please like it. And if you want to see more, please subscribe. Thank you and have a good one.